Hello everybody, this is Angel Arts, and welcome to, for me at least, the second hardest part of this entire process. I am talking about a time when I need to take the giant bulk of auditions for the upcoming Athenaeum tabletop campaign and whittling that down to a small select group of finalists to move forward into the next stage, which is the interview stage. So I just wanted to take some time to first of all thank all the people who came out and auditioned. Um, especially for those of you who, for whom this process is really scary and it's not easy to put yourself out there, especially in a forum like YouTube, which is available to the entire public. So mad kudos, mad props to all of you for taking the brave step to audition. We ended up with having a total of a whopping 20 five people who auditioned for this campaign, which is insane. I could be wrong, but I feel like that might be the largest turnout that I've ever had in one of my tabletop campaigns. And if not, I feel like it was pretty darn close to the largest. I feel like the, the ones that may have been some of the larger turnouts were the Mass Effect Season 1 and the Dragon Age Season 2 campaign. But 25 is crazy um, and it was a significant variety of new faces old faces and even veteran faces as well um, you all had such amazing ideas such creative um, concepts not only for your characters and for your worlds so it definitely makes me super excited also makes me feel kind of bummed that I cannot realistically incorporate all of those ideas into this campaign, I blame the kids. <laughs> I blame the family. <laughs> no, time and priorities always shift, of course. And um, but I'm I'm still glad to be able to commit to the time that I can commit for this campaign. But that also means I have to not take all 25 of you and whittle it down. So before I actually reveal the list, I wanted to sort of explain to everybody like what were some of the factors that helped determine who moved forward. So first of all, I wanted to point out that there were a lot of new faces who came in through the door for auditions, which I always love. And not only were they new, but they were also crazy strong auditions as well, um, which is super exciting. And because they are new, because they are players that I haven't had as much interaction with or experience with, they are also the people that I have the least data on. And so a part of the reason why I move people into the interview round is because I simply needed to collect more data to get more information. Because obviously if you've auditioned before and especially if you've interviewed before, I, I've already collected at least some data from you. But because we've got all these new folks in here of which I have zero data for, they tended to have an easier time to move on to the interview round because I can see sparks of potential and I just want to be able to dig deeper. So I think you're going to find the final list will be reflecting that. That being said, I also definitely wanted to take in consideration those of you who have been auditioning multiple times in the past and I recognize this and I understand that, you know, it's so many people have been auditioning year after year after year and they get so 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 close and you know I didn't want to obviously ignore that because I admire the tenacity and I admire the persistence and it's just so apparent that you know you are really passionate about this and this is something that you're really interested in it's apparent because why bother you know auditioning multiple times if you don't so you know, that too played a big factor into who managed to squeeze in um, into the next round. The last big factor, which actually seemed to factor in more this year than some of the previous years, was simply 
how active has this person been in the community? How active are you in the Discord chats? Do I notice you commenting and leaving feedback on everybody's audition videos? Do I notice you offering to help people with their auditions or help people with their interviews um, or even helping to provide uh, mock interviews for each other? So like those kind of things I feel do play a big role because there were a bunch of people that I was on the fence on and I needed to get some extra feedback and so I actually turned to your peers, um, I turned to the group of interviewers and I said, hey, I need help like deciding between these people, can you vouch for any of them? And naturally, the more active you are in the Discord community, the more likely somebody from the community is going to vouch for you. Not to say that that in and of itself is enough, you know, to move you forward. Like, I'm not saying that the most active person on the community or the people who, you know, offer to do all of these mock interviews and comments on every single video, I'm not saying that that is an automatic guarantee that you'll move on to the next round. But when it comes down to deciding between two or more people, and you have to like find something, some reason to give one individual an edge over the others, this can be that factor that allows you to split hairs when splitting hairs is necessary and you can't think of any other way to split them. So yeah, if you put in the time um, into this community that we've been trying to build over the years, um, that may uh, have been able to give you the upper hand uh, in order to squeeze on by into the top 12. So yes, there, is, there are 12 finalists. I originally was trying to do 10, but um, again, 20, there were so many auditions and so many super strong ones and there was so much data I needed to collect it, and there were so many people that I felt were deserving to at least be given a chance to move forward that I had to bump it up to the top 12. So what are the next steps after the 12 are revealed? So over the course of the next few days, I will be posting each of the individual interviews of the top 12. I think two per day. And I am asking everyone uh, to please take some time to watch each interview carefully and provide your feedback, both positive and constructive feedback. And please, I am stressing, make sure that your constructive feedback is constructive. Very appreciative of that. That feedback is very valuable to me because quite often people will bring up certain things or make certain valid points that I may not have really thought about and at least not until you brought it up. So that is a very important part of this process that not only helps me but whole also helps uh, the people that you are uh, giving feedback to so that uh, they can you know take that in consideration and improve for the future. And the last thing that I want all of you to do as you're watching these interviews is to make wise use of the like button. And I say wise because if there is somebody who you believe needs to, like absolutely yes, this person needs to be in the campaign, go ahead and um, push that like button on their interview video. Um, and as always, any dislikes, any thumbs downs, don't count for anything. I'm not even going to pay attention to them. I'm, it's, it's not worth your energy, not going to help at all. I would highly recommend that you wait until you've seen all of the interviews before you start liking individual ones, because that way you'll have a chance to see the full breadth of all the candidates and that way 
you know, you'll be able to use that breath to calibrate, okay, these are the ones I'm going to put likes on. My recommendation, just a suggestion, is to reserve five likes amongst the 12 candidates. So once you've watched all the 12, decide which five you are going to like and go ahead and like their interview videos. Meanwhile, all of the finalists themselves will be asked to send me who their four players, um, which four players they are most interested in playing with. And um, that is also going to play a huge role into who ends up being in the final roster. So thank you guys so much. Um, and if you have any questions about how the second stage of this process works, please feel free to ask them in the, you know, in the comments below. And once again, if you are at all interested in joining the Discord community and, you know, it's super active, especially during this time of auditions, you know, people are setting up uh, Zoom or Google Hangout chats left and right to socialize with each other and talk about the campaigns or just talk about tabletop gaming in general. It's a great place if you just enjoy tabletop gaming and are looking for a group or either to play in or to GM. Um, that could be a very good resource for you. I will have a link in the description below um, that will hopefully uh, be active um, in order for you to join our Discord server. So thank you again so much everybody for watching. Good luck to all of the finalists and until next time, love yourselves and love each other. Here are the finalists for the Athenaeum Tabletop Campaign. Thistle The Colorless King Emily Ian Green Oaks Games Micah Sandria Ronic Classic Gamer Adam Eclipse and Chris Congratulations to the top 12 and good luck to you on the interview round